Welcome to the Tough Fish Show. I am so excited to welcome back my co-author and my friend, Wayne Applewhite. Wayne, thank you so much for being back on the show. Jen, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure as always. Thank you. I am so glad you're here because we have some fun things to be talking about to share. But first, I would love for you to start with what have you been up to since our book, you know, it's a verb, right? Launched back in February of 2021. What have you been up to? <laughs> Thank you for that opportunity. I've been a little busy. <laughs> I've had, I've had, I think, two speaking engagements about it. But what's more fun is another friend of mine and I have started a podcast called 27 Minutes with Sheila and Wayne, where we are changing the world one verb at a time. <laughs> so so it, it cascades our, and I, and I tell Sheila and the listening audience that our book, you are my book, you know it's a verb, right? Is the umbrella for the podcast. However, we're talking about all kinds of verbs, big ones, tall ones, small ones, round ones, fun ones, and we're having a lot of fun doing it. And we have been on the air for a year now. It's our anniversary was last month. We do one podcast a week. So we've done over 54 podcasts now, 55 podcasts now. So it's nice. really fun. Nice. That's yes. really, really cool. And I love how you said that, like the book is the umbrella, but it's just, it's like a starting point. And I think that's really cool. That's so exciting. That's it so is. Much fun. So being on a show like this is just like, you know, old hat. Cause Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, <laughs> not at all. Because I'm, I'm sitting here nervous. I'm like, what is she going to ask me? I don't know. <laughs> I hope I know the right answer. <laughs> oh, you are just fine. You are just fine. So to your point about like, there's been activity about verbs and we have some exciting news about verbs too. Do you want to tell our listeners? Oh, Sure. Yes. Are you talking about the audio book? Yes, we have an audio book <laughs> coming out today, March 21st. How about that? <laughs> yes. Um, and, and it's, it's, yes, we're excited. I'm excited. You're excited about the audio book coming out today, March 21st. You know, people say, hey, well, how, how'd you feel doing an audio book? And I go, I was scared. <laughs> I had no idea what I was getting into. And really, it was hard. It was it was hard doing an audio book. And it wasn't hard. As one of my friends said, Wayne, you have the book, just open the book and read the words. Well, it's a little bit more than that. <laughs> because we wanted to get the tonality right. We wanted to get the the emphasis right. We wanted to get, you know, impacting kinds of things and, and the speech and excitement and boredom. And we wanted to get all of those feelings in the book. And you can't do that just by reading it. So you you've got to you've got to feel you've got to be the book. <laughs> you know, I, I love that you're talking about that. And you're right that there's more to it than just simply reading words on a page. With fiction novels, you really can feel like a performance, like a voice actor really taking on the characters and changing their tone and bringing you into the fold. Like if you're listening to a thriller, they almost change the sound of the voice to just add a little bit more intensity or what yes. have you. And, yes. and and we were looking at it like, the yes, this is nonfiction, but we want our readers to be engaged. We want them to feel like, We've said this book is like mentors sitting with you. I kind of likened it to be able to take the book and sit at my desk at work at a lunch break. And I just have my mentor time with me in the book kind of a thing. And it needed to feel like that. It needed to have that kind of feeling along with the intent when we first wrote it. So when you talk about that feeling of being a little nervous and, and trying to get the tonality right and get all of those things, the inflection, the pacing, those things correct for the book. How did you go about it? Like, what kind of things did you do to, to help with that? Well, just like any other speaking engagement I do, I, I crawl into a little corner, either go into the, a closet and close the door, or I just do, if no one's here, I just do it out loud. But I, I go through some mouthing exercises that I was taught when I was a thespian. And just before we would start the play or before we start practice, practicing, and I'm going to do it right now with a little, little bit of an exaggeration, 
It's always the A E I O U. Tigers to tail, to ten tall tails, to chitin to the tip mouse, to tie, twenty two tigers together to twine. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and so I would just kind of do those just to get my mouth and my head in sync. Because when you look at the words, and as you said, everybody can open a book and read the words, but can they read the? Can they read the feeling? Can they read what's really trying to be emphasized? Can they read the exuberance? Or, or there's this cacophony of sounds. It's just, you know, crashing through your head and you want to get it correct. And, and you say, what did it, what did I do to get it right or to get it done? I had a lot of do-overs. <laughs> yeah, I, I hit delete, 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 and I finally got one. And I, I think I told you once before. I had one file, one wave file that was perfect. It was absolutely the quintessential file. And I deleted it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said some bad words and, you know, had to do it again. <laughs> and doing it, I did it at three o'clock, two o'clock in the morning because there are no airplanes flying over because I did it at home. We didn't do it in a, in a thousand, you know, 10,000, hundred thousand dollar studio. Um, we did it at home. And so I did it at a time where no dogs are barking, no cars or trucks are driving by that could be picked up on the microphone. No airplanes are going, uh, nobody coming in and out into my spaces. So it was all deliberate and it was all set up and all staged. And there was a lot of prep work, a lot of prep work. I read the chapters. I read the, the pieces that I was going to do three or four different times before I engaged in with the microphone. Absolutely. I, I did too, because yes, we wrote the book and we've read the book multiple times just to, you know, in getting it ready for its first publication and in subsequent times when you're working on a presentation or you're working on a piece, you're going back and looking at the material, figuring out how you want to tie it in and make it relevant and so forth. But reading the book, it helps to read the sections that you're going to do and then go back and say, okay, now I can do them because it doesn't feel like you're looking at unfamiliar information and you have an idea of how it should feel or you have an idea of what you want it to feel like. We worked with Elysian Nightfall Studios and one of the things that we had guidance on because it was both of our voices was an opportunity to say, okay, with our like Wayne remembers and Jen remembers to deliberately say those certain things to break up our story and alternate it. So I said, Wayne remembers, and then that would lead into your story, which broke up some of the readings that were going on. Because if you said Wayne remembers, and then Wayne's going into Wayne's remembering, it might've felt a little <laughs> weird, but me saying yes. it didn't feel that way. It felt like, like, Hey, come into the story that you're about to hear from Wayne. It felt more like an, like a bringing the reader in versus it feeling different. So we got coaching from the production work team that we worked with, from the yes. audio production uh, developer and coach that we worked with. She was really instrumental in helping us think through how to structure, how to read. And when we did send work that wasn't, you know, perfect because she encouraged us just keep reading even when you know you've messed up keep going because we can clean that up and I'll give you things I'll tell you when to go back and correct I gotta tell you that when I heard that when she wanted me to do that I ultimately said I know I need to but I realized I was dealing with a little fear of imposter syndrome at first going okay oh my gosh can I do this I don't want to turn in something you know, turn over something not so great or what have you. I should keep working and I should keep refining it. And I went, you know what? Trust this process and you will gain more confidence even when you stumble because you're learning and you're gaining confidence by doing that. And I'm glad she did. And I could tell the chapters we got back on the ones I did because I'm like, <laughs> oh, those were some of those ones I did those on. But how did you feel when you heard her tell us, you know, yeah, don't worry about, like not making those changes to don't just keep on going and I'll pick them up and we'll redo them and we'll fix them later. Well, it helped a lot because I, one, I know that I'm not perfect. So that I, I go into anything knowing that, but I also go into everything I do. Yes. I'm nervous and I'm fearful that I'm going to 
not do it right or correctly, but I have never gone into anything thinking that I was going to fail. Right. So, so going into this, I knew I was going to succeed. Now, how, how great of a su- successful thing this was going to be, I don't know. But with, with her help and teaching and coaching and, and giving us those kinds of tidbits, it was helpful because it put me at ease to say, okay, since I know I'm going to fail <laughs> right. with some of these things, not miserably, but since I know I'm going to stumble, mm-hmm. she has given us ways to correct them and she calls them pickups. Yeah. <laughs> so we had a lot of pickups to do, to, to go back. It wasn't daunting, but it was more work and harder than I had anticipated. And yet it went quickly too, yeah. at the same time. I, I mean, reading the book, as you said, we've read the book three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, 25 <laughs> times. Yeah. And then when you go back and you read it to do this, to do the audio book, I was amazed at how difficult it was. And what I started doing, not at the initial point, but maybe a third of the way in to all of the pieces that I had to do. And to the end, I started having a conversation with myself as though I was the reader or I was in an audience and listening to me. So I'm talking to myself or I'm talking to this imaginary person and I'm thinking about what their expressions are or what their, um, how they are receiving the information I'm giving them. And then I would say something in a different tonality or d- different intonation to kind of counter or offer them, oh, and this is why we're saying that. And and I could see them go, oh, okay, well, thank you. And I go, yeah, you're right. And I just kept going. So I, and, and I had problems with that. And that also made me delete a few things because I was, <laughs> okay, it's three o'clock in the morning. One time I was waiting for one of them to answer me back. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't answer. So there was this long pause. Went, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so I, I need to get rid of that dead air here. But with her help, it made it easier. And when you and I would interact with each other, talking about going through the process, it was fun knowing that you were just as excited, just as nervous, just as wanting to do this the best we could. But that's how we went into writing the book as well. And it was, it, again, it was fun, but it was daunting. I, yeah. no question. Oh, I, I agree. I mean, I knew that when we first started thinking about an audio book, I really felt that our voices were important, that I realize you can hire narrators and and voice actors, and you should in so many cases because the human voice, the human doing the the reading, really can, offers so much richness and so much depth that I think it makes it a much more engaging listen or read because of that. And so, to me, it felt right that it would be ours to to do to to voice. And yet it also felt like, wow, I have never done this and I am excited and I'm a little nervous, but my excitement outweighed my nervousness. My excitement outweighed the fear, so to speak. One thing I thought was interesting was that our production manager, the uh, from Alicia Nightfall had suggested that we kind of batch some of our recordings. So try to get so many done within to four hour windows. And I knew that I needed to kind of build up some stamina to that duration just because I'd never done one before. So I felt like, although it sounded, it sounded relatively simple, but the first time I tried to do that and realized, oh no, I think I need to ease into this and just allow my voice to go for as long as I can. And recognize my goal was to get so many chapters done that helped me I focused on how many chapters I was trying to do versus the duration that I went and I'm curious what was your thought process on how you went about managing the work to get it actually recorded well first I opened up the book you and I went through and we mapped out the sections the chapters the parts that we were going to be speaking as the narrator And as we mapped those all out and you set up this nice little spreadsheet for us, thank you very much for doing that. That made it so much easier. (laughs) But I went through the chapters and the parts that I was supposed to be narrating. And I said, okay, I'm doing this one, this, I'm doing, you know, A, B, 
F, G, X, Y, Z. I'm doing those. And so I would go through and I looked at them and I, I started off by saying, oh, that one looks fun. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to save that one more towards the end because I want to have that as a reward. Because if I find one that's that's not going to be as fun to me, I'm absolutely going to do my best I can, but I'm going to do it perfectly because if I don't do it perfectly, I can't get to that one that I want to do that's going to be so much fun. And so that put a lot of pressure on me. And I found that that worked very nicely for me because I did. What I did think about halfway through, I, I should have thought about this first, was the listener is going to have the opportunity to hear you and I narrate our book. So the tonality that we use, the emphasis that we use has to be exactly matching with the thought that we had when we wrote those words that we want to get across to the listener. And that was my goal to do it that way. Some chapters proved to be easier to do that and others did not. But the ones that really said that, oh, you're supposed to be excited this time, you know, and, and you got you to gotta do this word with enthusiasm. It was easier to match those and do them. And again, with your Excel spreadsheet, I checked this one off. I had a little smiley faces. Oh, I did this one. This was good. And one of those was one of the ones that was perfect. And I was, yay. And when I got to the, the file to save it as a WAV file, I hit that delete button and I couldn't, I couldn't do anything for about the next two days. I, mean, oh, I was crushed because <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, you'll never get that perfect one back. <laughs> I know what you mean. Ah, so, you know, so I, I screamed a little bit. I hollered, I, I cussed myself, you know, but I, I got over it. I, I picked myself up, dust myself off and got back in there. But that's really a reflection of the writing process in general. I mean, how many times do you, you work on a piece, you're writing your manuscript and you get stuck or you get frustrated with something or you think this is amazing. I am so excited. And then you go back and read to start refining, like, what did I write? Oh my gosh. And then you've got to figure out how to work with this. Or you've worked with an editor and your editor has come back and said, this is great. Now here's where we need to improve this. And you're like, what? I wasn't <laughs> expecting that exactly. So, you know, yes. so what you're describing to me is a natural extension of the writing process. And yes, the book was written, but we were recreating that in a different way, which I totally agree with. Now, I did use a similar technique where I I, done, I knew there were ones that I was super excited to do. I did them first because oh. I felt the joy about them. Like, okay, I can't wait to do this. Let me do the one I'm most excited about or this one that I was feeling really excited about for today. And then I made sure I kept that energy moving in the next recordings that I did because it set the tone to say, this is the tone I want to convey. And this is the energy that I want to have move through when I'm reading. So let me keep that. And when I could feel it start to go, no, you've reached your cap for today. Okay. Then my <laughs> reading was done for that day. <laughs> it, it, I don't know about you, but there were two chapters that I had. You, you mentioned being stuck that I just could not get through, just could not get through. So I had to put it off. Okay. I'll do all right, I'm not going to do chapter H and J. I'm going to do chapter D <laughs> and I'll do chapter D. Then I'm going to do chapter Z. I'll come back and try H and J again. And H and J said, mm, nope, you're not getting it. So put those away again. All right, I did M and F. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I came back to H and J. And finally, and I remember one time talking with our engineer, master, um, director, coach, I said, I'm going to break this chapter up into about 15 or 16 little bitty sound bites. And she said, that's okay. And the weight of my, the weight of the world left my shoulders. It was like, oh, well, thank you. I, yeah. Okay. That's right. She is splicing, dicing. I don't have to get it perfect from A to Z each chapter. I can just take it paragraph by paragraph and do it that way. It made it so much easier, so much better, and so much harder because now I'm trying to get each paragraph 
perfectly synced up with the other paragraphs so that my t tonality, my hoarseness sounded as though it was the same day that I did it. <laughs> like, okay, I got to listen to those files. Where was I? What was I thinking? Okay, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. Because again, because again, I was thinking about in school, in college, where you're reading these passages of prose or poetry by an author. And the instructor invariably says, so why do you think they wrote this? What were they thinking? How did they sound? And, and I, I, I know I usually said, I don't know, they're dead. I, you know, I can't ask them, I don't know. But I said to myself, this is gonna be fun because the individuals who are reading the, or listening to our book, particularly listening, they will know exactly what the author was thinking or how excited they were because we're trying to put that feeling into the audiobook. That made it fun for me. That made it magical. That made it wow for me. Yeah, yeah I love that. I, I love that. I really do think it's a cool experience when you hear the author narrate their own book because for the very reason you said, you really feel like, oh, I get what you were communicating. I can feel that from you. And it's, especially with nonfiction, I just think that that is so, so cool. I just, I love that so very, very much that you can, you can feel that and you do see that coming through. So Wayne, this has been really cool. I love the fact that we did another book, but in a different way, we did an audio book. Yes. <laughs> yes. Just a really cool experience. I, I am really glad that we said yes to doing an audio book and it's out for people to get. So Wayne, where can people connect with you? Where can they get our book? Oh, they can connect with me. I have a website. It's www.mindsyncing.com and that's M I N D S Y N C I N G.com. They can email me comments, complaints, dirty words, happiness at Wayne at mindsinking.com. They can find our book in our audio book today on Amazon mm -hmm. and hopefully where uh, other books are sold, but particularly Amazon because Amazon has it in three medias now, ebook, paperback, and now the audio book. I'm excited. I'm so excited. And thank you for doing that with me. It's so fun. So fun work with you. <laughs> Likewise. I am so glad we did this. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it. And thank you for being on the show today. Oh, and thanks for having me. Thanks for asking.